Ba titi iyo Ye kete ende bolo Di makane te lo ba di bola niko Di wiye ma benda ma wuna ninya Di makane te lo ba di bola niko Ye abonde nyo wa mo 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 Ye abbe ma di bo di bima Bolo na me se mo ende bolo So mad at the moonya, mo bulu na mo si mo ende mo ko ya bunya ni mo mo, ni ya fe mo di mo di mo ma. Jungle longo mo ni dena, ko bole mi so, ala nenta ni benango. Iba bada bo be ni konango, ango ni wa wapon, si se nenta ni benango. Celebre bo bate te di ba no no. O ma bande nyolo nyola che. Kalo ma kingi na kalo di ba no no. 
Very excited about this um, artist. I think that I would have had better penmanship if I had known what one could do with pencil. <laughs> um, Peter is new to Chicago. He is um, from Ghana. And we are very pleased to be able to introduce him in his first uh, show here in the U.S. So he has had shows in other places. He's from Ghana. And I'm going to, um, I had wanted one of, um, I'm not looking at anybody, but there was an artist that I wanted to interview Peter. He wouldn't hurt himself, so I couldn't get him. So I'm going to interview Peter, someone who I, Really, um, have known a short time, but I'm very fond of this young, gifted artist. So, Peter, why don't you tell the group a little bit about where you're from? Okay, um, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody uh, for making it up to my speech. Um, God bless you all and for taking your time, part of your time, to come to my speech, and I appreciate that a lot. Um, my name is Peter Boate. I'm from Kumase, um, in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Um, um, I have five siblings, and I'm the youngest. And I've lived in Chicago, um, Ghana. I schooled in Ghana. I had all my elementary and my high school and I graduated with a bachelor's in communication design in the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana. Then I lived um, a little bit in London where I had a couple of exhibitions there. Then I moved to Chicago. Right now, I live in Chicago, so this is my place. <laughs> so that's a little bit um, from where um, I was born to where I'm living now. Thank you. Peter, can you tell us how you started your career, your art career, and how you got interested in this? Okay, um, thank you. You know, when you when you're born, definitely you 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 identify something that you you can do best. So when I was young, um, in my school time, I started drawing, and you would never know how I was able to draw. So I started drawing cartoons in schools, and I remember during Christmas time, my elementary school, the teachers will come up for me, and I'll be drawing for that Christmas on all the blackboards. Mm. And that was really interesting, and um, I got to know that I could really draw. So, well, I have no trace of an artist in my family. So I didn't really get somebody who is an artist that would be really pushing you to get up and do what you can, you can do best. So I just developed the interest in that and was able to, at a very young age, I was able to draw really well with pencil and with pen and a little bit of painting that, <laughs> forgive me to say this, I didn't really like paints getting on my stuff. So <laughs> I, I, I just stopped working with paints and loved to do with pen and pencil. So, 
getting along with that, I really uh, get got motivated to see people really do greater works in pencils, and I really loved the pencil and wanted to get the best of it, and not only for just writing, but know what best the pencil can do. So that is what I got to know and try to develop in that, and um, I think this is where the, the Lord has brought me to. I know, um, always I say I'm not there yet, that this is what I can do for now, and I know I, I will be able to do more better than this, and this is just the little beginning of um, Peter using the pencil to come up with something. Well, I want to be there when you get there. Mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not there yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Peter, how, you know, every, people have been asking me, okay, these look like photographs. They are so, they're so alive. Some of them look like they're just going to step off the, the paper. How do you get there? Since you're not all the way there. Right. How do you develop this technique? What, do you, how do you do that? Well, I think um, it was the Lord who brought me to this point. Um, I think it was the Lord who brought me to I know for whatever you're doing, definitely you, you'd have a path that you'd really fall in love with. I know we have um, so many forms of art, um, impressionism, realism, abstract and all that. Some people just fall in love with abstract and try to do something abstract, but um, I fell in love with coming up with something that would really blow the mind of people. That is doing something that, um, like we say, photo realism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like trying to come up with something that you did not take a, foot, uh, a camera to take a picture of it, but people would see and like, ah, I think it's a picture. It's, you know, so that is the path that I really developed um, interesting and tried to do all my best to get to that level. So with doing that, I could take just simple objects uh, like oranges, cups, and try to draw it for people to see that it's really a cup that is being put on paper. So that is how it all started. And I just started with simple objects. And along the line, I shifted to portraits. And that is where like, people would see that this is really a person. And that is what I'm trying to do. And that is where I developed the interest in doing. Not really drawing the whole figure, but making portraits. And because I really love the features of the face and a little bit of the body. Mm. And that is what I really wanted to be able to portray that people will really see that it's real. And that is my interest for now. So what is it about the face? Because you, you've emphasized that in conversations we've had before that it really begins for you with the face. there's something about it you want people to focus on. Right, definitely um, when you see somebody, it, it's just the face that you, you look at first before you see what the head is on. Mm. So looking at the features, we, we have so many types of faces. And for you to identify that this person is this and this person is that, I think there are special features on that person's face that distinguishes the person from other person. So for you to be able to draw and people say, this is like this person, it means there are special features on that person's face that, it, that makes people to be able to identify that this is that person. So um, that is all that I think um, I really want to be able to be able to draw that features for it to look like that person. And I think that is it. <laughs> so you, we talked a little bit earlier about um, the process you use, you use for getting started. So when you see someone or you see a photograph and you decide, I want to paint that, tell us, walk us through how, how that, do you just grab a piece of paper and begin to do it or how does it happen? Okay, thank you. 
And first of all, like I started with, you need to develop some interest in something. When I'm scanning through the pictures that I see or I would want to draw, first I really um, I get interest in pictures that I feel like I get some impact from the picture, and that is um, that is within the person, and you can't really tell what attracts you to that picture. So if I get an interest in a picture, I don't just take the pencil or the paper and start drawing. I really need to look at the picture, study the picture, study the features, and it takes some couple of days whilst I'm working on some maybe other things. I would wake up in the morning, maybe look at the picture, and whilst I'm walking around, I remember what I've been seeing. So I really develop interest in the picture, study the picture, and so that when I start drawing, I already know what I'm about to do and I get used to it and it becomes part of me. So, and like I say, I take really a long time to do the works and not just sitting at a stand and get it done. And I take sometimes um, 20 hours to 80 hours to come up with a picture. Cause some, I might work maybe six hours today, leave it, come back the next day or some other time, take a break and continue with it and any time I comes to it, by the time I finish with the drawing, I see different things going on. I might maybe finish working on the eye, but when I get off the work and come back to it, I might see different things like sitting on the stand and looking at it. So it's a process that I take uh, before I get done with the whole work. Mm, that's interesting. I know we talked about this piece. Um, the esteemed elder okay. uh, here, and you did something with her uh, that you were telling me about because you wanted people to focus on her. You didn't want them to be distracted by something that was in the photograph. Can you talk about that? Right, okay. For that um, photograph, um, there was so much going on um, with a picture that I, I wanted to draw. First of all, um, you could see that there is some beads um, on the forehead. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of beads on the forehead, like the picture I saw, and I decided to reduce it and make it two, because mm -hmm. I didn't want the forehead to be. Already the picture had so many details going on, so I really wanted to um, get some out and add some to it. So I reduced that, and um, the bottom part, already there's, the wrinkles are too much. And I wanted to really focus on the wrinkles and get like as much wrinkles that I can get. So the fo I wanted the focus to be on the face, not on the other things around the, the picture. For instance, the uh, beat on around the neck, it was a whole lot. Mm -hmm. it, it was beats like um, those round, round beats. And I thought it would distract the face and some attention would go on the Beat, so I decided to take off that beat and create this kind of beat. So this is not really what is on the picture, but this is what I created to put around the neck so that it would just go with the um, work and would not distract the face. It's like a, a camera that has focus only from here to here and then soft focus. Right, like maybe a glow, yeah. something. Yeah. Right. And you did something with her mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> and one thing, the mouth, it was opened with some teeth um, coming out. Oh, okay. And I thought that too would distract the face, and I took it out and closed the mouth. So sometimes some pictures, there are a whole lot that you might not need, because depending on what you want to show, and you think it would be distracting the picture. Uh, the, the artwork, so you have to take some out and add some to it, so that's it's called how. artistic license. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got the license to do what I want. Yes. <laughs> the detailing in your work is it's just wonderful. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's really is. And, the, and the shading. Yes, what is, was this on, on the original or did you add this? this? Yes, um, it was on the original, but it was curved in a way that 
I didn't really like it, so okay. I just made it straight. Okay. <laughs> yes, there is a lot going on in that art piece for real. Well, we're, since people, this work causes people to really have lots of questions. So as we're talking, please feel free to jump in and ask anything that you might want to know about this fabulous work. In this, in this piece, for the first time I see color other than just black and gray. Okay. It's a calabash girl. <laughs> okay, I think that was the last piece I did. No, last but one piece. Um, I really wanted to do it all black, but I disguised with uh, Faye, like I showed Faye the picture that I really fall in love with that. And she suggested that um, it would be nice to see that color effect. I don't really do color work, like I said, but I thought about it and it would make it look uh, outstanding. And I think uh, with that color in there, it's it's looking outstanding. I like it. It adds intrigue. Mm -hmm. It adds intrigue mm -hmm. to the picture. Mm -hmm. Right. And now I think uh, it's something that I've learned, and <laughs> I, I will be looking out to that to add some some color work to my like po uh, portraits. I really like this piece that third piece you is called body art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that away? Um, it's, um, Scarry, Scarry. Yes, Scarry, right. Mm -hmm. And um, there's something about that piece to me that um, you did the treatment so, mm, with such dignity about it to me, you know. And I don't know, did you, from the picture that you saw, did you add things to this? Well, um, the picture was so small. It was so small that um, when you enlarge it, it gets bezelated. Yes. Like you start seeing the bezels. Mm -hmm. So um, it was for me to use my artistic eye, what I see and what I know, to come up with something. Well, it had um, less of details. Like you see the necklace, there was no, there was no necklace there. But I just don't want her to create something without anything. But would wanted to like I wanted to show the neck, but what is around the neck? So I just created that small necklace around for you to see that that's where maybe the neck will start going up from. And um, the the really the most interesting part that I saw in that picture was the body work that like the body art mm -hmm. and what she had around her waist. Mm -hmm. So that was really my focus and. Um, I think the treatment there to I love it myself I love it and like you could see that some some strains are overlapping at this and I really much focused on that area and that was my focal point in the drawing when I put this picture up of this young child here I got so many calls and mm -hmm. who what who is this artist that Talk about it. the detail in this piece is just amazing. Can you talk about it a little? Okay, for this piece, I saw the picture, fell in love with it, and wanted to um, put like get all the de details that I could get in that picture. For all uh, for this drawing, I didn't really add anything to it and just um, drew the whole picture. So um, I tried to. Well, it was it was um, it was up to this stage, mm -hmm. and I it, I didn't really like that. So the only thing I added was the top part of it, mm -hmm. and I think I tried to come up with like try to show more details in the work, and I think it's looking stunning. <laughs> <laughs> I love it myself. Don't be shy, I'm blaming. <laughs> Wouldn't be. How do you get this? Even though this is pencil, it you know I look at some of it, and sometimes it's like I just almost see different colors. I guess it's the shading. How do you get the shading like this? Tell me so I can go and do it right. <laughs> <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> okay. Since I said um, it takes a lot of time before I come up with this drawing, I can do demonstration. But 
when I started to um, do this kind of um, style of drawing, I started and I, I start doing the shadings and it looks like, the drawing looks like a ghost on the paper. And I'm like, I this is not what I want. How can I, you know, get to that level? So it, it was a matter of me getting more time and doing a lot of drawings so that I get mastery of it. So I realized that you, you need to add more layers to it. And this is not just a layer I laid down, then I get this effect. Like I do about three layers. I first start with the, like, just the whole, I cover the whole piece, then I keep covering it till I get to the level that I want. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of adding layers upon layers, and as you, you, you're covering the ghost, you see that you add adding flesh to it, and definitely you start um, like rounding the forms, mm -hmm. like the, the whole face is just uh, like round um, um, objects mm -hmm. that makes up the face. So as you start adding the layers to it, then you start coming up with the, the forms, then you take out some, you know. Mm -hmm. And basically, the, the color of the paper is my highlight. Mm -hmm. So I don't work on those parts. What, what tool do you use to blend your colors? OK. Your finger, or do you use a stump? Blend. Right, I have a stump that I use, <coughs> but it's so small. So sometimes I use a cotton to okay. smudge mm -hmm. to get a smoothness. Mm -hmm. And you know, you keep working on it, then you smudge. You keep yeah. working on it, then you mm -hmm. smudge. So basically, I could use cotton or I could use a foam, mm -hmm. a foam in the mattress. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I use to smudge. Mm -hmm. As you build your layers, do you spray your layers, or or you just build it and then build the next? Okay. And the third and the fourth. Mostly, uh, you see, when you're working, ideally you get your fingers on it. Yeah, your hand, your hands. And yeah. you make mm -hmm. a scratch on it. It will definitely show. Yes. No matter how you erase it, yes. it will definitely show. So. You make sure that maybe once you're working, you, you work from the upper left mm -hmm. down because mm -hmm. you go that way. So I start working from upper left, and it depends sometimes. Um, I, I can work just like that, but I don't really get what I'm, I, I like what I want to see. I'm not really getting it. So I have to cover the whole picture mm -hmm. and try to work over it again. But sometimes, like the old um, lady, I did not really work the entire image and got back to it. I just work from the upper left straight downwards. Okay. And I try to come up with, like, finish before I move down. Mm -hmm. So um, it's unfortunate that I don't have anything to show the no, processes. No, okay. Yeah. Hey, may I answer a question? The, when I walked through the door a couple of days ago, one, two, three, four, five, number six, Okay. That child there yeah. right. has just, it is so amazing. Mm -hmm. How did you, did you go to that pain? Um, I think um, the same process that I take in doing the other ways, that is the same process, you know, like the focus was on the tears. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that is what um, attracts somebody to look at it. Why is you know what? Why is the baby crying? You know, so you you have to. What the thing that attracts somebody to look at it is what should be your focal point. So my focal point on was on the eyes and the tears, and just cover the other part to come like to cover the whole piece. Mm -hmm. And it's stunning. Oh, yes. thank you. Absolutely, isn't it? To me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> And there is another piece, um, as you look around, and I want you to really take time to look at the work, uh, there's another piece, there's a smaller piece mm -hmm. of a child with tears. And it is small, but it is so impactful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Wow. And I think I saw the person who just bought the, that one come in. Come down right your hand. 
you uh, can you talk a little bit about how you felt when you saw that um absolutely i um originally hi everybody i'm carmel uh, um, originally when I first saw it online on Facebook, I saw that first piece, um, and I, I fell in love with that immediately. You are extremely gifted. Um, and I immediately said I had to come, and she, um, I had, I have a little in, so I knew when she was gonna put it in before. So she asked me to come over yesterday, and um, I came in, and I remember coming in the door, and I remember trying to go to that, but I got distracted because I saw, well, I saw this piece first, and that immediately stuck me. Um, and it was just beautiful in the eyes, and it just pulled me in. And if you worked in child welfare, and you worked with, you know, I'm a social worker, it touched me in such a profound way. And then I started keep coming up, and I saw Michael, and I'm like, that's very cute. That's Michael, he looks very happy. And then I stopped, and I saw that piece. And I was like, just go ahead and put the sign on it. It's mine. <laughs> I love it. I can't live without it. And for me, um, I've been collecting art for a while. And for me, one of the ways that I know a piece that I have to have is when it pulls you in immediately. And when you can't, I mean, um, my boyfriend Greg is here. He said, well, where are you put it? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant where I'm going to put it. But it can't be anybody else's home except mine. So I love it. It's beautiful. Carmel, would you bring me the small piece back there? Bring it out? Yeah. Just take it off. Because I want people to see. The impact, though. Uh, the, the impact of Peter's work, and we've seen the big piece, but look but. at this. Oh, yes. You know, it's much smaller, mm -hmm. but it's something that just draws you in to those eyes. You know, like you said, it's the tears. You know, right. know. Right. what is the matter, punk? <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, the detailing in this work is just. Peter, you say you're not there, but yeah, I want to. We want to be there when you. He gets there. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a piece. If you look to uh, this east wall over here, uh, when uh, that piece was hung, that's called Mercy, Mercy, and Mercy, M-U-R-S-I, <laughs> Mercy, Mercy. It's a group. And uh, when you look back at it, and the light shines on that graphite, it's just, yeah. it's totally intriguing. And the face comes forward. The yeah. face comes forward. It looks like it's going to just yes. come out at you. It's dimensional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this, uh, the Calabash girl, mm -hmm. her hand looks like it's coming towards yes. you yeah, some yeah, kind yeah. of way. Like it's dimensional. It's going to come forward. Well, Peter. Peter. From now on, we'll be known as Peter Little. I haven't asked him why the name was. <laughs> uh, but um, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, I know, like uh, Carmel said, there are times when you uh, see a piece and you know you can't sleep. You know it's in your head, and you're like, oh, man, I gotta have this. I don't know. I gotta pay the rent. Um, <laughs> There are artists that come along and you say, this one has a long, I mean, he has a long career ahead of him. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be very curious to see what Peter does in this uh, long career because right now he's just kind of painting, drawing a little. He's not there yet. <laughs> so I suggest that you meet Peter today that you talk with him about his work. Um, of course, we have the prices and all of that. But I'm going to suggest to people that if you want to collect Peter, start now. Start now. Start now. Yeah. <laughs> because when he gets there, mm -hmm. wherever there is, where is there, Peter? <laughs> um, like I know there, there is, um, when we say eternity, um, like my pastor said, uh, it's like going to the beach and you try to collect each sand one after the other. 
you never um, finish getting it. So I think when I get there, you know, people will just get rid of me because they'll just look at the work and they'll, they'll have nothing to say about it. Like they would, it would just blow, like they would have nothing to say about it. It's like taking um, a picture with a camera, just print it there. Like you just believe that it was taken with a camera. Like there is nothing for you to doubt. And I think that is where I want to get, like people would just look at the drawing and think, would just doubt you that it is not drawing, no matter what. The person can smash the finger on it, will see the uh, pencils on the finger, but still not believe that it's a drawing. <laughs> I think that is where I want to get to. So that might well, be you, my third. Well, I think our people, <laughs> yeah, people <laughs> see my drawing and um, they think it's not. Um, um, it's not the pencil work, it, they are pictures. Because I remember I was doing one exhibition. People were just walking around and they would not come around to look at it. And we confronted the people and asked, oh, you can come and see the drawings. They were like, they are not drawings, they are pictures that you've just framed them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Okay. I'm really getting closer to there. You know? mm -hmm. So I think that is where I, uh, I think there is. But if that was the reaction of the people, then they didn't stop. They just thought it was a photograph. Right. What stops you, or what stops them, obviously, is the idea that it's not a photograph, it's a drawing. So there might be an advantage to what you are doing because if it were a photograph, there would be more detail around it. Right. And the way you you have created this image, to me, is obvious that it's a drawing. It's not a photograph. Okay. Because you've allowed the paper to be part of it. Right. Unless you Photoshop a lot of stuff, and I guess there are a lot of people who do that. But even Photoshopping takes a lot of technique. You know. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, Someone mentioned the picture of Michael Jackson, and um, I love that one because he looks happy, he looks healthy, yeah, yeah. Healthy. he looks joyous, he looks like the Michael that we, we fell in love. 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 love And it's just beautiful. And then the Martin Luther King. Oh, that's so many pictures of Dr. King do not look like him. It's yes. very true. Yes. They look. They remind you of him. They got something about him that's like him. But that's Dr. King. This one looks like he just finished speaking. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, did you see the Obama in the, the window? Yeah. yeah. I uh, told Peter that second term Obama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's wonderful the detailing about that piece. It's just, I'm in love with Peter's work, as you may well tell. I'm a little biased. <laughs> But um, please come and meet Peter. Take your time and look at the work. And um, don't let me have to say in a couple of years, I told you to buy Peter Little way back then. <laughs> but I'm going to be attached to this young man for a while. So I'm going to answer the name. Boaten. How did you get Little from Boaten? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. The little one. Little mm -hmm. one. Um, two questions. The first one is uh, graphite the only medium to use as a drawing medium. Basically, I use graphite for the whole image. Okay. But if um, I want to get really dark, like the, the background, graphite can get you that dark background. So I use charcoal for that background. But Charcoal never gets um, into the face and the, the whole body itself. I just use charcoal for the background. Uh, and your highlight seems that to me, for you to be able to control using the paper as your highlight, that would be very, very difficult. Yes. Is there any other medium for the highlight? No, I never use, um, some people use white pencil yes. or um, white content. pastel okay. or whatever, but I never use any of those. I make sure the paper is my highlight. 
I wish we can open up and you and no, you can you even look closer to it. <laughs> you definitely you definitely see that yeah. there is no other medium apart from the pencil. And I think when you when you get the mastery of something, you you have to be able to control it. And that is where I think I'm able to control that using the paper as my highlight. Mm -hmm. And lastly, may I may have the privilege. Uh, lastly, have you ever walked from a live uh, um, I remember doing that when I was in the university. I had figure drawing class, and that was the, the times I, I drew from life. Um, but I never had interest in pursuing that because I fell in love with portraits. So um, I've done a couple of them, and sometimes I'll, be go, I'll just go around, just look, like, look at people uh, walking around and be drawing them. So I've done a couple of that too. Thank you. Oh, I was just going to ask, uh, you don't use a kneaded eraser for your to wipe out for your highlights? Yes, um, I use kneaded eraser. But you see, those are the times that I cover those areas that I really don't want to. <laughs> then I'll use kneaded eraser to just pick the um, lead that went on that area to get those highlights. You can tell the artists in the room can't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they ask very good technical <laughs> questions. It was so um, in your journey to get to this point, were there any artists that influenced you? Yes. Um, there is this artist in UK. He's a, he's a Nigerian, but he was born there. He's called Kevin Okavo. Um, I think he's the only artist that really motivates me, like an African doing something that he sells his drawings for like 9,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it would amaze you why he's selling those art pieces for that. And when you look critically at the drawings, I think they deserve those prizes. Like, it just looks real. Like, are they figurative or are they more contemporary aspect of what? No, it's portraits. He does portraits. Mm -hmm. And it looks <laughs> it looks like he's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Missy Bobby Mundumbu Tembula Chiba Leno Nae Kima Bobo Mundumbu Lambula Chiba Leno Nae Missy Bobby Mbale Bana Tembula Chiba Leno Nae Songa Sima Wele Koko Ukuele onga 
la senta na mawolo pondwango de papi wanga katimba musuka mondene no samanga ndoninka umana mwana mwana 